absolutely crucial in this question to get a good diagram down and, and set things up well. So we've got a long straight road and then some traffic lights here with a car starting at them. Okay, now remember the car is being treated as a particle, but I'm gonna I'm gonna draw a little diagram for it. Okay, the front of the car is kind of what I'm interested in. And I'm told a few things. I'm told that the car moves along with constant acceleration four meters per second squared. So we're gonna be using SUVAT here. And I don't really know what time interval I'm looking at at the moment, but I'm just going to, I can put that information in. Um, and it also has initial velocity zero. Okay, meanwhile, there's a motorcycle that travels parallel to the car with constant speed 16 meters per second. So actually in this case, the acceleration is zero, the initial speed is 16, and the final speed is 16. And you can actually just ignore these and simply use um, the fact that S is equal to UT. Okay, that's the only SUVAT equation you can then use. Right, this bit's quite crucial. So the car... Oh, okay, actually, we need to look at what we're actually trying to find. Determine the two values of t at which the car and the motorcycle are the same distance from the traffic lights. So the motorcycle is starting behind because it takes 1.5 seconds to get to the traffic lights. That's a really bad motorcycle, sorry. It's not much better now, but anyway. Okay, so they're both moving along. So this one's going to move along a bit. This one's going to move along. And this one's moving quite fast. So it's going to overtake. But then this carries on moving at a constant speed. And actually the car is speeding up. So what you have to realize is that although the motorcycle will overtake, later on, the car is then going to be going fast enough. For example, after four seconds, it's going to be going 16 meters per second. It's going to be going the same speed. And then after that, it's going to be actually be going faster. So eventually the car will overtake. So these are the times we need to look at. And therefore, I want to calculate the values of T where they ha they're the same distance from the traffic lights. So let's look at it like this one moves along this one. Okay, let's call this a distance capital S. Because then we can put it into both sets of SUVAT. And I want to know the time. So for the car, I'm going to call it capital T. Now, this is the this is the hardest bit of the question, probably working out what to write for the motorcycle. Um, but hopefully you've done questions like this before and you're somewhat familiar with it because it passes the traffic lights exactly 1.5 seconds after. It's like it's, its clock is just 1.5 seconds slower. And so the T is actually capital T minus 1.5. Whatever the time it takes the car to get to S, like 8 seconds, it will take the motorcycle 1.5 seconds less, 6.5 seconds, because it's like its clock started um, at a later point. So that's critical. And we can use that now to determine the values of t, because I can write down some equations over here. Obviously, I can only use this one, like I said. So it's going to be s is equal to 16 times capital T minus 1.5. Whereas over here, I'm going to use s equals ut plus half a t squared. So I didn't say that, but I'm applying SUVAT to both, and I'm looking at the um, time interval between the dis displacements being the same. Okay, I'm not going to write that down, but that's what's happening. So then S is going to equal, well, U is zero, so that helps. 
So it's going to be 2t squared. Sorry, 2 capital T squared. So when I mean, maybe I should have said this earlier, but when they are the same distance from S, sorry, same distance from the traffic lights, it must be that 2t squared equals 16t minus 1.5. We've got an equation that we can solve to find t, and it's a quadratic. We're going to get two solutions. I'm going to divide through by 2 before I expand the bracket, I'll just make life a little bit easier. So that's going to give 8t minus 12, and therefore t squared minus 8t plus 12 is equal to 0, and this factorizes minus 2 and minus 6. t equals 2 or 6 seconds. Okay, I think that's quite hard personally, you know, but I hope you're happy with that. That's the majority of the marks of this question. Um, so let's just, you know, now we've actually solved the equation, like you might have solved that equation without actually having thought about what exactly is going on. But we see now that, right, so the car is starting to move and the motorcycle is moving, but it's behind. And then after 1.5 seconds, the motorcycle's here and it's 0 0.5 seconds later that they both moved on somewhat and now they're in line. So now between two and six seconds the well the motorcycle's gone ahead but the car is speeding up and then there's going to be a point where it's actually caught up at six seconds this actually leads into part b describe the relative positions of the car and the motorcycle for t is between two t1 and t2 so sorry i missed it a little bit we're told that the two values are denoted by t1 and t2 so for us that's two and six T1 is a smaller one. So describe the relative positions between here. I'm just going to say it one more time. So the car's ahead. It's been moving for 1.5 seconds when the motorcycle kind of reaches the traffic lights and then 0 0.5 seconds later, so two seconds in total for the car, it overtakes. And then it stays ahead until the car speeds up enough to catch up again. So for B, we just need to write down that the motorcycle is ahead of the car. On to the very last part. So we're asked to determine the maximum distance between the car and the motorcycle between time is 2 and time is 6. So remember, we've got at 2, they are in line, and then at 6, they're in line. So in between, there's going to be a point at which the motorcycle is getting further away. And then there's going to be a maximum point where that of that distance that difference in their displacements, actually, which we're going to use. And then after that, the car is going to catch up until they're in line again. So here's the key thing. We need to actually just find the difference between the displacement of the motorcycle and the displacement of the car. So that's going to be 
16 times t minus 1.5. I'm now working again. You know, I'm not interested in capital T when they're in line, but in little t, which is a, a variable, minus 2t squared. So find, and I might call this x, find the maximum of this function. Sorry, that should have been little t. Just don't forget, earlier we set them equal to one another and found out that t was 2 and t was 6. So when t is 2, this is going to be 0. And when t is 6, this is going to be 0. And so we need to find the maximum. Now, actually, I've just given quite a big hint because you might have seen this. When you have two roots, the maximum, and this is a negative quadratic, so that's what it's going to look like, is always exactly halfway between the two times. So I, I don't, and I don't even want to find the maximum, I've just realized. I want to find the time. So I know I do. I want to find the maximum distance. So it's going to be when t occurs when t is equal to 4. So if you realize that, you can do this question quite quickly. If you don't realize it, then you can still get it by differentiating. And it only works here because it's a quadratic. So it's going to be x is 16t minus 24 minus 2t squared. And now I'm going to differentiate it to find the maximum. dx by dt is going to be 16 minus 4t equals 0 for stationary points. And therefore, t equals 4 at the stationary point. And now I can substitute it back into the original function. Like I don't need to, I don't think I need to check the second derivative and prove it's a maximum. I know in this case it's a negative quadratic, so it must be a maximum. This will give a maximum. Because it's a negative quadratic. And therefore, when t equals 4, x is going to equal, I can actually put it back into this function. It might be a little bit easier. It's going to be 16 times 2.5, because 4 minus 1.5 is 2.5, minus 2 times uh, 16, so minus 32. Or actually, maybe I'll leave it as 16 times 2. So it's going to be two and a half lots of 16 minus two lots of 16. That's going to be a half lot of 16 or eight. So the motorcycle at one point is eight meters in front before the car gets to the point where it is accelerated. It's gone beyond uh, 16 meters per second and it catches up. OK, neat end to this question. I do like this question and I hope you enjoyed it as well.